such as lactic acid bacteria, actinomycetes or yeast, and photoautotrophic bacteria. Many of them, but I'm taking three of them to show you the miracle of life that you may be embracing the new biology, the new science. Next one. Look at them. The three of them is like a symphony. They're working together incredible. And that's what we are deploying now to change our agriculture. Next one. Look at them. They like to active bacteria. They decompose organic matter and fermentation and create barriers. No smelling. We wash with them. We come with them. Yeast infection among women, extraordinary. In your bathroom, everywhere. Cleaning your water, there are agents. They protect us from everything. So these are the new world, this is a new world now that you go into to prepare you for the third, for the fourth and fifth industrial revolution. This is the basis of the new revolution. If you miss this thing, you've missed everything. This is one of the strongest pillars of that one. Please forget about my, my picture. Let's get a big picture. Now, next one. They decompose harmful gases, so ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, everything. So you can have your poultry next to your window. In the piggery, you can eat there. Nothing, no, no, no disease. It's a different world altogether. The idea that the farm should smell, no. They protect us in our homes everywhere. Next one. <coughs> Look at in our roots. They just show you an example. Please keep on going. Now look at it. In life, there are three types of microorganisms. The one here on your left, they are the bad ones that cause disease. They are the Boko Harams. The middle are more in number, they are opportunistic. The one on your right hand side are the best ones. They are very active. We call them effective beneficial microbes. What do we do? We make them active. We make the one on the right active. And because they follow the leader proclivity, they make these ones go to them now and make the life of the bad ones impossible. This is what we are doing. This is how nature has been working. We studied it. That's how God, remember in the Bible, Lord, didn't you plant good seeds? How come that we'd have come? Give us permission to clean them. He said, no. No. Disease doesn't mean the absence of the bad ones. Disease means when there is imbalance. So all we are doing in health is to balance up that these guys on the right joining with this one will be more powerful. We are the base, we are the big. As we are saying, they are Boeing now over there, over there, the same thing. We are the alumni of Boeing. We are the alumni of good ones. Everything goes. These guys go away. And also the gene trading. Your DNA is it's my only fix. I can't change. But this guy can share their DNA and then follow them. This is the new science, my brothers. This is the center of a new world. What you are seeing here. If you capture it, my sons and daughters, you will be on the driver's seat. Next one. Next. Next one. Next. Okay, look at it. This is how a crop looks like. All those microorganisms. All the production, three times, four times sustainable. This is all the microbes working for us. You don't need to import anything. Those have come to Songhai, this is what we do. All of them, they are working for us. They don't go on strike. They work on Sundays and they are happy. We are doing our work as God's messengers to bring all the creatures of God together to work. This is a faith base. That's why this university should be thing. This is what you've been saying. God has given us permission to all his creatures together to make them work. And if not only man, the whole creation of God. We are sent to them as missionaries to make them work for the kingdom of God. Next one. Now look at in the conventional agriculture, I challenge everybody in Rome. If you, if you put 100 units of dangote fertilizer, you are yeah, corn will be happy to get 15%. I challenge anybody. 85% is washed out, polluting the environment and doing that one. 
This is what you've been doing. It's like throwing away your money. Next one. But now using those microbes, the mycorrhizal, the, 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 the yeast mycorrhizal, they collect all the phosphorus around from the weed, everything you're not using. They take them. They don't leave them next to the roots. They enter and create partnership with them. Symbiosis. They enter into the roots. The roots will give them sugar. They give them phosphorus. And that is why the production is bad. Look at them. These are they sharing that within them. This is a new agriculture. When you come to Songa, I see greenness everywhere. We are not planting fertilizers that are killing the microbes. These guys are delivering all the weed, every kind of thing, and then delivering them inside the roots. And the roots will give them sugar. It's agape. It's creation. It's love. Believe it. The roots are the kingdom of God's place. Every part of the world is the God's place. Why should we stop only with people with two legs? Our mission to everywhere of the world. So every Christian must be a scientist to understand these things. Next one. Now look at it. The micro reasons. Next one. Now look at the results. For every 100 units around them, they deliver 90% to their plant. And 10% is manageable. It wasn't cause any pollution. So we have changed the environment of them. It's just... It's just a miracle. Imagine 15% to 90%. Not only they are polluting the walls, wasting their money, they want 10% to still be recycled by other bacteria and reused again. My brothers, my sisters, my daughters, this is a new world. This is where you do your agro-entrepreneurship, not the old one. Don't waste your money. This place is rich. It's a mine. I was asked today, there are two types of mining. We have been mining in an old mining place. The petrol or the oil is gone. Now, this is a new mining field that is have low-hanging fruits. The old one, we have to, a lot of money polluting the environment. The new field of agriculture is this one, where you don't have to work as much. That's why we say it's producing more and better with less. That is entrepreneurship. When the input is by far less than the output, you're an entrepreneur. Today, the input in conventional agriculture is more. Many people are failing because they're working in the old system that is producing less with more and worse food. So this is a new field that has low hanging fruits where you can now invest where your entrepreneurship must be here not the old field stop wasting your money where like in the bible putting yourself where there's and we come and good isn't it so um, that is what we do so put your money not where the ants and things will come and take them but where you get the returns next one so this is I'm not going to be wasting most of your time. You'll be reading them. This will be here. Next one. Please keep going. going. Now look at it. Look at what you're doing. The production in the region of corn. One, 0 0.5 to 1 ton. As some guy, we're getting 3 to 9 tons. Look at sorghum. Look at soybean. Without spending a penny no pesticide, no herbicide, nothing. God can give. The microbes are doing that for us. It's just incredible. This is what is happening. The VC and his group saw it. Next one. The same thing. Look at them. So these are the elements in your entrepreneurship. If you do it like this, you're going to beat the person by far doing it the old way. And I believe that in this system here, you start doing it here. An integrated system approach. That's this one. Look at it. Nature is connected. You don't do crop one side, animal one side. Nature is integrated. This is the business model. Crop, live fish integrated. Marketing technologies. It would be wonderful if this 
all the departments, all the colleges are working in this bigger college. I know you have colleges. Can you have a super college of Bowen? That even those in law are part of it. They tell us how to start good grammar, participate, so that we won't remember. It's really important. I'm thinking that in the next one is bigger colleges, super colleges. Look at, look at primary program. Look at it. The worst from one because he put in another one. Nothing is wasted. Next one. Now, look at. Energy is very important. It's the waste from the crop animal that we use to make our own energy, biogas. There's no nipple. Now, look at it. If you look at on the top right, there's a toilet. Top right, toilet. We don't waste it. We don't have soak away. Everything flows into the water hyacinth with the bacteria you thought about. They will filter it, clean it up, capture the solar energy, and the water coming out is clean. No smell. And then we use it now to produce biogas. The biogas is now generating electricity, waste to wealth. The PP, the shishi, we don't waste them. This is the energy, solar integration. We get them from the sun everywhere. Energy is critical in agriculture, but people forget about it. So energy is critical. That every place you are, you produce and use your own energy. We call it agri PV. You see the photo of Vitalik. This is pumping by the sun. Look at what is going on. Small technologies. We are now training people to do that. Songhai has become the center of excellence for European Union. And those of you coming to Songhai, because we are going to offer a special quota to Boeing. Something. They've been learning all this. From Boeing students finishing now. And after I email you, the next thing, go move at, at least minimum three months, they'll be over there, the land, so that we start building here. So this is going to be. Now look at the soil is the beginning. The first in agriculture is the soil, second is the soil. So soil is the beginning. We got this is all the waste, but look at how the thing is producing. Next one. Look at that production. Let me go in. Be going. Now look at this is from the piggery flooding now. We harvest rice three times. You cut the rice. You, think, you don't remove it. The same old rice, you pour this with microbes, they grow back again. This is incredible. This, this is the third time. The third time we are cutting it. The second time produce more than the first one. Because the soil is getting more richer and more vibrant. The microorganisms are there working over time. So it's a new world altogether. The quality and better. Next one. Now look at all the palm trees. The harvesting the phosphorus. All the things we don't throw them away or burn them. We now give our microorganism the harvest to produce phosphorus and potassium. All those things. Next one. Now look at the production of this. Things. You see all the straws here. The microorganisms are taking the straws to get phosphorus, all of them. Look at the production of our cassava, everything. Next one. Look at, we put the beans that produce nitrogen, that this microbe, the, the microbes, we call them um, azotobacter. They produce a lot of nitrogen. We plant them in the yam, so they are producing nitrogen. We put the straws, the microbes, we give us the phosphorus, our yams are like big like this. Easy. And the best one, after only three weeks, two weeks, we plant there again because the soil is waiting. Give me a job, give me a job. We normally wait for four years, three years. This one. So look at it now, you see. The mulching with mycorrhizal bacteria to harvest the phosphorus and other nutrients into that. We burn them. But you see what's happening. Look at everything is composted. The microbes are mining everything and putting the back into the soil. Next one. Look at the purple. Next. Look at what is going on. This pump by solar. Next one. Look at the production of coconut. Let's, let's be going now, but let's enjoy it now. Next one. Look at the cabbages. Look at the result of it. Look at that. Look at that. 
Look at the color of the corn production. Look at the cassava. No place for weed. Look at the rice is fed from the of the pork. The insects, good insects, attack the bad ones. God has created them. We don't have any pesticide. We call them beneficial insects. Look at the grass cutters. It's Noah's Ark, everything. Look at the, the, the sheep. Their waste is used to fertilize for their food. Next one. Milk goat, one female, 2.3 liters a day. These small things. Imagine you have a hundred. You have amount of 2,200 and something liters. You can go yogurt, ice cream, all sort of thing. It is possible. So this is it. Next one. Now look at the old agriculture. Poultry. On the ground, all that thing is waste. All here. All that waste on the ground. From this one, manure, the smelling, smelling, smelling. This is the old agriculture. It's not working. It's creating problems. Look at the new one that you have. Next one. Next. Look at it. From the manure to biogas, nothing is wasted. Everything is reused again. We call it zero. Zero emission research initiative, total productivity. Nothing is wasted. Next one. Aquaculture. Look at fish. Next, be going. This is the production everywhere. We have produced capacity of 2 million a year. Look at that. Be going. <clears throat> Stop it there. Crickets, we complain that crickets eat our plants. No, you make friends with them. We are now growing them. One female can give you in 42 days 2,000 babies. And the protein level is 71% all the amino acids. What we've been regarding as enemies. So we are now growing them, harvesting them, using them to grow our fish, our chicken, everything. And they are giving them, what are we giving them? The waste from the kitchen, all kind of thing, grasses, the lettuce that you throw away, kind of thing, and they eat it. Next one. You see this? Look at them. Look at what is going on. Next. You said we are in the laboratory, we analyze them. You see, science. Biology. Now let's go now. We produce Africa. Sorry, sorry, back. Africa has been importing, uh, has been exporting wealth, importing poverty. So we must create wealth here, wealth here, and wealth here on the driver's seat. So we should stop exporting our primary products. We must give value. That's that value chain. Not one, one value chain, but all the value chains working together to create the ecosystem of employment and productivity. This is one element when we make many subsectors or value chains together, we create a big ecosystem that is regenerative, that creates employment every day, that creates wealth every day. This is a new world. Now, let's look at the small enterprises that I hope we we'll see in Boeing very soon value addition, food processing, manufacturing, and construction. Let's go. Next one. Let's go. We are producing our own machine from the West, from the Tokumbo cast. We mail them. Look at all this for instance. Next one. Look at this. We are now exporting them. What should we get? Look at all this in Wasim to Cote d'Ivoire. This is the UN now ordering this World Food Program. Agro industry. We won the first prize in, in Vienna. Be going. Next one. You see, these are young people like you. Look at the thing. Yogurt, ice cream, look at the oil. Soap. Any carrot or thing you don't need, you crush them to make soap. You have carrot soap. The girls, if you use that soap, eh, you go shine, shine, shine. <laughs> now, all the plastic you turn away, we get them now to make new products. We recycle everything. Tertiary section. You know, we are on marketing. We must manage it from the soil to the table. We must manage from the soil to the table. Everybody, we must manage from the soil to the table. That's how we become free. We control from our soil to our table. That's why you capture wealth, all of them. The Lebanese and all of them, I'm sorry I'm not a racist, they are taking our wealth. The African farmer is poor because he's not on the driver's seat. This is what you are doing. 
ecotourism everywhere. Next one, you see ostriches. Next, this is native cows, bringing them back again. You have to, to have fun. It, ag agriculture is becoming sexy. We want you to have fun. You've seen a lot of things, drones, microbiology. The new agriculture is not for the, is the, for the best brain in the family. The best brain in the family should not go to law. <laughs> should go to agriculture. And that is me. <laughs> you see now, training. Training is the thing. Next one. You see, this is my world. When I'm with young people like you, I'm empowered. This is my world. Look at them. This is really the blessing of God. And I think the professors here must be blessed being around these young people here. Let's be going. Throughout Africa, we're not growing them. Be going. This. And that one you saw picture before is from the Baptist Church organized from South Africa as some guy. They are coming back again. They liked it. They are now putting their people back, the catechists, everybody, pastors, all of them now, when they saw it. They are now pushing it. So the church is not only blah, blah, blah. It's a whole community that is sustainable. Now, when we change the way we grow our food, as you have just seen, we will change ourselves. We change our values. We change our society. So we can eat healthy food for healthy and better living. Food that prevents disease and promotes healthy aging. You see, with my age, you see, I'm still moving around you know, because I eat good food. Next one. Now, see this video. This is for you. We made it for you. Look. Sound, please, sound. Don't be a parrot in life. A parrot talks way too much but can't fly high. But an eagle is silent and has the willpower to touch the sky. Here's the seven mentalities that we can learn from an eagle. Number one, eagles fly alone at high altitude. Eagles don't fly with sparrows, ravens, and other small birds, meaning Stay away from narrow-minded people, those that bring you down. Eagles fly with eagles. There's a saying that goes like this. People you hang around will eventually determine the person you become. Keep good company. Number two, eagles have vision. They have the ability to focus on something as far as five kilometers away. No matter what the obstacles, the eagle will not move his focus from the prey until he grabs it. Meaning have a vision and remain focused in your life. No matter what the obstacles and challenges you may face, don't give up and you will succeed. Number three, eagles are fearless. An eagle will never surrender to the size or strength of its prey. It will always give a fight to win its prey or regain its territory, meaning no matter what the size or big your problems are, don't give up. Instead, face it. Successful people are fearless. They face problems head on. Number four, eagles are tenacious. Eagles love storm. When clouds gather, the eagles get excited. The eagles use the storm wind to lift themselves higher. Once it finds the wind of the storm, the eagles use the raging storm to lift itself above the clouds. This gives the eagle the opportunity to glide and rest its wings. In the meantime, all the other birds hide in the branches and leaves of the tree, meaning achievers are not afraid of challenges. Rather, they relish in them and use them for profitability.
Number five, eagles never eat dead things. Eagles never eat dead meat. In other words, an eagle does not scavenge. It only eats the meat from the prey it kills itself. Meaning, do not rely on your past success. Keep looking for new frontiers to conquer. Leave your past where it belongs, in the past. Number six, eagles prepare for training. They remove the feather and the soft grass in the nest so that the young ones get uncomfortable in preparation for flying. And eventually, they fly when it becomes too unbearable to stay in the nest. Meaning, leave your comfort zone. There is no growth there. Last but not least, number seven, eagles possess vitality. When the eagle grows old, his feathers become weak and cannot take him as fast and as high as it should. This makes him weak and could make him die, so he retires to a place far away in the mountains. And while there, he plucks out the weak feathers in his body and breaks his beak and his claws against the rocks until he is completely bare. A very bloody and painful process, then he stays in his hiding place until he has grown new feathers, new beaks and claws, and then comes out flying higher than ever before. Meaning, we occasionally need to shed off old habits, no matter how difficult. Things that burden us or add no value to our lives should be let go of. Thanks for watching this video. Share and subscribe for more amazing inspiration. That is a mission. This university believes in fellowship. We must do fellowship with the people with the same mindset. The VC said you only admit people with the same thing. Don't mix it up with drop pushers, us and of them, sir. With all those nonsense. So, let every young man here be an eagle. God bless you all. Let us keep clapping. Let's keep cla clapping, please. Those are the back. Okay, thank you. We can sit down. We can have our seats. Okay, it's time to take a um, few questions from the students. I believe it's been a rewarding and um, enlightening um, presentation. Uh, yesterday, uh, Father, as you are putting together your questions, I'd like to say this. Father Godfrey was telling us that poverty is not when you don't have money in your pocket. That it is more than that. That it is our inability to see the abundance around us. And um, you've been saying it that Nigeria has been exporting riches and um, importing poverty. And um, if you go to the Bible, you know there's a place when Jacob was running away towards his mother's country and he had to sleep in a place. You know, when he woke up, he said, the Lord God is here and I never knew. So, this is an enlightening presentation and it should open our eyes to the abundance we have in our environment. He's talked so much about microbes that we hardly see, but they are in abundance to help us with productivity, so that with little, we can have very much. So, I would like to take questions from our students. If you have questions, can you raise your hand? Yes. Um, 
One, two, three. Can you come forward so we take it one by one? You find a place to sit here. Eh? Yes, yes. Come over. Any other? Number four. Yes, please. Come on. Number five. Okay. Any other from the back? Yes, please come over. That's number six. Yes, please. Number seven. Can we take one more? Number eight, yes. Yes, you have your feet. You come one by one. Yes. Yeah, come forward. Ask your question. And then um, it will be. Good afternoon, sir. It's a privilege we have been. Okay. 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 Uh, it's a privilege to be given this opportunity to talk here. Uh, okay. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, did you ever apply for a loan or how did you get the financial, um, the financial aid to be able to achieve this great, this great um, project? That's my question, sir. Thank you. How did you get the financial aid to be able to achieve right. this project? Yes, thank you. We'll, we'll take your questions. You can bring it. Number two. Number two. Okay, yes, you can go. Good afternoon, sir. Honestly, I must say I'm very, I'm very proud to be a boy knight because I wouldn't get this opportunity anywhere. Last week, when our vice chancellor mentioned you, I did a little research on some guy fans and a little. I watched some videos, sir. So, first, I would like to ask, sir. We have cases where in Nigeria, ag the agriculture is like a discouragement. When when we're in primary school, they ask what if you, if you want to become a farmer. We have people like you want to become a farmer. It's like it's a poor man thing. It's a poor man idea. So, what is that? To achieve this great thing, what was your biggest, will I say your biggest inspiration or biggest, will I say source of, without discouragement and everything, sir? Source of inspiration. We would like to take your name and your program. My so when you come forward, you tell us your name and your program, then you drop. I, let us give us a name. The name and program. My name is Manuela Jonke, MLS. Medical Thank you so much. Science. Thank you. Number three. Um, good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for everything you've shared today. And, um, name, and, really, name and program? My name is Ajilo Joshua from the uh, Department of Philosophy and Religious Studies. So my question goes thus. Um, everything you've shared today, even looking at this slide, I got quite interested. And it actually requires a knowledge of agriculture. So let's say for someone that is outside that feed, all right, probably might want to go into it in the future. Someone like me, how do I start with no knowledge, no experience, go into this, invest into it, learn about it? Then you also made mention of training programs for people that want to learn how to do this. How does it work? Uh, do you have to have a qualification in that line, or me outside that feed, come and learn? And um, when you started, um, how did you get mentorship for this that you are doing? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Number four. Number four, so you tell us your name and program, and you go ahead with your question. Good afternoon, sir. My name is um, Awe Goodness, and I'm from the English department. English. I have a few questions. So the first one is, how did you feel when um, Nigeria, the government didn't allow you to get the land here, and you started in Benin? And why do you why do you have the urge to save Nigeria from the problem that we have even after they didn't let you develop the country? That's one. The next one is what do you do with the dead bodies of animals? Because you didn't mention it in your slide. And when rice is being harvested, I just want to confirm. So is it that um, after the first harvest you pour it back on the ground, then let it decay and try to help the soil? Or 
you let it dry. And last question. So when did your plan to change the agricultural sector of, of not just Nigeria but the, um, of Africa start? Is it when you were growing up or when you became a teenager entering university? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Number, number, number six. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, so um, I am a... My name is Dolan Andetaniela. I am a computer science student. Yes, so um, I have three questions. My first question is this. So if anyone saw, cause, um, and also before I continue, so I love your, the way you presented and also what you said because actually there was zero waste and you were so innovative that, because I don't know how someone based on agriculture would think so much that every single thing you saw, there was not going to be any waste and then he was able to innovate it into something that could profit other crops like it's so innovative like that's so that's so much yeah so my first question is this so if anyone saw what you saw before you started they would have actually loved to associate with you but how were you able to still run with it because um i don't know if um you were probably meeting someone because a lot of probably you won't come here alone and then you have probably come here with someone if anyone was with you when you first started so like how were you able to like just run on your own and then run with a vision run with a strong vision and then my second question is this um i know um you had like i said i know you have some people that are with you that moved with you um but um there, there are some times okay like i have some people that um like let's say they are like friends they are like almost at my age mates but when i try to like talk them to talk to them about some kind of ideas like they are not really moved to because they are not seeing what i'm seeing they are really not seeing what i'm seeing so i know that okay how am i able to like push them in the way that like okay you guys um please okay you all try to try to see what i'm seeing like how am i able to like motivate them in the way that they are able to run with that same vision that i have so now my third question is this which is the last question yes the last question um okay so um, a lot of people right now, they are really not really um, interested in being innovative or thinking of building new ideas or new things, new things, because actually a lot of inventions have been made and we need to in innovate things, things just like tech. And then softwares, different softwares have been brought by just innovating, innovating. So like, how, I, um, how should someone who has not really started any innovation get that kind of mentality of always thinking and then always um, struggling to think and because I sometimes I just try to like talk to people about being innovative but they are not really motivated to do it so I don't know is there any way that you can like someone should be innovative someone should think probably the way you were thinking that someone could also think that I could get your own kind of ideas That's all. thank you so much number seven number seven Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Francis Ketiku from Mechatronics Engineering Department. So I thank you very much for your presentation today. I've learned quite a lot. But I have two questions majorly. So um, for you to be this good, firstly, um, for you to be this good in your field, you obviously found an opportunity. So my first question is, what are practical steps that you use to find opportunities that could actually bring you to the limelight like this? Now, secondly, um, there are obviously threats in every business. So how do you handle threats in your business and what threats do you face currently? Thank you. Thank you, Francis. The last, come over. We have quite a number of uh, guys coming out. That's commendable. Thank you very much, sir, for this innovative talk that we just heard. So I would like to understand what sustainable your technology name and your program. Okay, sorry. My name is Agune de Wisdom, Medicine and Surgery. I would like to understand what forms of sustainable technologies does Songhai Farms have in place to ensure that it just doesn't take from the earth, but it also finds a way of giving back to the earth. Because you made that as in one of your slides, made it a key point in one of your slides. And secondly, I would like to understand, you stated that the, um, in Songhai Farms there are zero 
nearly, do you have a nearly zero chemical policy where there are no pesticides and nearly no fertilizers? I would like to understand what, how do you prevent, how do you preserve your crops and how do you prevent, um, um, you talked about how you use microbes a lot in everything you do. I would like to know, are those microbes also efficient in keeping pests at bay and also preserving your food crops? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. The first person, financial. Yeah. No, this is the question many people ask me. Yes, thank you. The question they ask me is about money. At Songhai, we have five capitals. The first capital is human capital. People who are prepared, people who have head, hand, and heart. And second capital is environmental capital. Knowing what God has given you, the possibility sets. Third capital, social capital. Getting together, working together. Technical capital. The last capital is financial capital. If you put emphasis on financial without putting in place the four principal capital is a total disaster. That's the mistake. So a project like this, yes, money is important. It's far from being the most important. Even land is important. It's far from being the, the most important is you. You prepared. You who have the discipline, the, the culture of discipline, entrepreneurship. Put a little money to work. The Bible said he gave some talent. He gave them one, two, and five they were able to use that one to multiply we have a moral responsibility the guy that succeeded he gave him more because the boss knows he has the capacity the one that gave to maybe limited capacity the one he gave one he wasn't sure and he proved himself so if you really want to be supported show the evidence that you can multiply is during the training at Songhai, we give them small pieces of land. During the training, we're able to detect those ones. And then we do mapping the capacity. At Songhai today, we have more than 90% of returns because we have prepared them to use those funds. If you are not ready, you put the funds in their hand, it's a disaster. This is what we do. We borrow money, all the projects in Nigeria, billions of naira, giving from phrase to phrase, all of them work. That is why we are doing it differently. We are equipping the young one. So when you put resources in their hand, you can. an entrepreneur is a person who knows that there is limited resource in the world. That's what we call it economy. And then he knows how to channel those resources to get the better results. This is what we teach them at Songa. We give them small There's no infinite resource. That's always limited. The person with an entrepreneur knows how to use them to get maximum return. So yes. So we create an environment where you show yourself. You can't just go to the bank, give me money. So we call it entrepreneur space where you show after learning that you can do it. And then, the Songhai is a, a, also a service center. We know the capacity of those people. So we know them, and then we give them. After the training, we put them entrepreneurship space, where we put them for 18 months, for 12 months. We spend the place and give it some money. Those that, re, that succeed, we give them more. Those that don't succeed, we say bye-bye. So that's what we do with the next one. Yeah, the biggest inspiration is this. As a scientist, I started seeing nature, biology, the soil, 
And when it came to my mind, the way they are doing it, no good though. I was convinced. I said, we can't continue. That's what science does it. If you read the Bible, you see the from the Bible what how we should act. And another person is acting differently. You won't accept it. So I came from the source of nature as a biologist. I'm from spirituality. When I get baptized, that is converted from Saul to Paul. I was seeing the world differently. I was convinced the old way creates more problems. So I had the responsibility to use my new knowledge to create new tools, with the tools to create new systems. That's how it does. So it was a spiritual, scientific mission. And all of us have the responsibility to harness their knowledge to create wealth. You have no excuse. In fact, many Nigerians should go to jail because they are poor. I don't see why we should be poor in Nigeria. God has given us everything. So we are changing the whole thing. That's why we're building a new system where you can feel empowered. That you don't need billions to do it. I started with one hectare of a land that was dead. I used a part of my inheritance and collection from the church where I was working and I told the Dominicans to block my salary for six months because nobody's going to finance this crazy boy from engineering and microbiology and agriculture. I knew I wasn't going to get it. So I did my own financing. People believe. My mother believed in me. People around me, they believe. They gave me some money. So I used the intelligence. So I used my own way. You can do the same thing here. You cannot detect the role of of people is detecting the talents. In world, there is, I'm a farmer. You have chicken and the hen. If the chicken is fertile, I mean, if the egg is fertile, the mother sits in and 21 days, the baby will come out. Isn't it so? But if the egg is not fertile, the mother can stay for 20 years. Nothing. It will die even. So you should not incubate eggs that are not fertile. That's the role of the, to detect them and empower them. But in Nigeria, we're giving money to everybody. So again, this is what we're doing. Now, if a, if a chicken, I mean, if the egg is fertile and the mother a hen is disciplined, she will sit on the egg until the baby comes out. So the solution is fertile egg with serious mothers. And I hope Bowen will do that one there. So that the young people will know, not just give me a certificate. No. You have shown me that you are fertile. And we invest in you, you work. So that's what we are doing. Yes, sir. There's no limit. As some guy today, I have a retired lawyer, that's what I wanted to teach him, from Ghana. Came from Ghana, retired, sir. He is producing incredible mushroom shiitake that takes one kilogram is twenty eight dollars. His wife told me I never see my husband as happy. He visited and saw it brutal. So imagine from law and agriculture and successful. He sends me drinks every year. He's so happy. So again. Songhai is a place we do incubation. As long as you're a human being, you have a passion for life. You enter as a biologist, as a lawyer, as a philosopher. If you're a human being, you will gain the capacity to do it. We are not born philosophers, lawyers. We are born as human beings who eat, who drink. Have you seen all your mothers? Our mothers are professors, engineers. They don't tell their children, I'm an engineer, I can't cook for you. No. The mother to the child is the mother. Whether she's a professor, a doctor, the child doesn't care. She is a full mother. So it's been multifunctional. When you enter into the Songhai space, you try to develop your capacity. I've seen it. It works. They even do better than conventional agriculturists that think they know it. They come with what they call in the Bible, Beginner's mentality. I don't know it. But people who come with brain filled up with garbage, they are giving lectures of what they don't know. I call them the damaging directors. They damage instead of teaching. 
So that's what they do. So again, it's very possible. As long as you have the passion, you can learn fast and do it. You can't graduate in philosophy if you are stupid. No. That, that's it. Finished. Yes. How did you feel when Nigeria rejected the vision? What do you do with Arnold and how do you to change Okay. Um, dead animals. We don't waste anything. Before the animal dying, we cut them up. Use microbes. There's any disease. We recycle them. We recycle them to produce other feed. Even when there is even a disease in it, we know the microorganism to put in the silage. The microorganism will turn them around. So we won't say anything. We don't. So again, even feathers, we use feathers. We extract them. The, the droppings, those of you who come to droppings, the droppings, every two weeks, the droppings are transformed into fertilizer because you are putting microbes. So any waste from dead animals, from blood meal, the blood meal, we design our abattoir. The blood is flowing into the fish pond and the fish are having national conference. Everything and growing like crazy. So no smell, it's just integration. So dead or not dead is a part of the biological system. It's the part of it. We don't have soak away in our toilets. If you go to the toilet today, the next two days, your toilet, your urine is working already for us. You know, so and then we filter them with water ice and everything. So we don't, because we are radically engaged in that system of total connectivity with nature. So it's working. Yes. The next one here. Yeah. Yes. How did I feel when Nigeria rejected? I said, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they do. And I keep on doing, I never give up. Remember the ego, tenacious. I'm still. We see the rejection is not because you know, it's because projects in Nigeria is a cake to share, not a cake to make. People see projects for their pockets. So it's not their fault. So I'm looking for places that are fertile, that can receive this idea, and I've just found one since yesterday. Because that idea is powerful. You sow seeds on the rock, on the roadside, it doesn't. But when you sow seeds on a fertile ground, what do you get? Hundredfold. We think Bowens is a fertile ground that this can grow. So, Bowens is Nigeria. I can't revolt. There are two things in my family. They have been sold before. We keep on, we are very, we are coming back to Africa. I don't even know where I come from. So we are coming back. So you can reject me two times, I'm still going to be coming back. So as long as I, some of you think, before coming to Africa, I studied Islam. Islam, because I was, accidentally my mother was visiting, I was born in Kano, Islamic town. I studied Islam. People ask me, why are you studying Islam? I say, in Africa, there are Christians and Muslims and all that. I studied Voodoo. I studied Islam to understand what they're doing. Because those people are my brothers. I'm sent to them. I do most of the year. I do because I'm traveling from my point. I do the um, the karem. What do you call it? The fasting with them. So this is what I do. Wherever there is an African, it's my home. So again, this is what I'm doing. So they don't know what they are doing, but they are coming back now. All of them are coming back. We did it in Amukwe. You talked about it, Amukwe rivers. We left almost a billion naira years ago in rivers. Six months, boom, they finished it. I'm not discouraged. They want me to come back. I say, no, I must clean all those people. I can't come back in this room. So what are we doing now? We're now working with private organizations. Songa is developing its own now. We're going to start in the east and the west and then go north. So it may be in Bowen, maybe may be The land is in the bad, it's already gotten. I'll be going. The terrorism starts to break. We'll go out. So I want to do it everywhere. I did not have this idea in the beginning. My idea was to be a professor of electronics, giving stupid lectures left and right, putting myself. But when the reality came in the early 80s, 
is the reality of holding my eyes. I was attacking a priest who is my professor, my mathematical professor, because he was black and he was white. I attacked him, but the way he answered me, blew me. I saw that something in him, that humanity, that Christian godliness. I attacked him publicly. The way he answered me broke me. I said, this man is not ordinary. I, that's how I get, I started reading now. From my love, from my reading, when he gave me Bible, I became rebaptized. I went from Saul to Paul. So this is, they asked me yesterday, who are you? I don't know. I'm just searching. So again, the next one over them. Have I finished that one? Yes. How, do, how should someone who hasn't had any innovation develop an innovative mind? Exactly. The, the, that's very good one. Now, is the space that triggers innovation. That's why this university is important. The university should create a space that triggers. As a biologist, billions of years ago, the earth surface was sterile. There was no oxygen. The prokaryotes, you know, started for billions of years multiplying, bringing oxygen, until there was enough oxygen that triggered the evolution of that one. This is how nature works. You build the environment, the environment builds you. That's why this university is important that is based on spirituality and science. That we create the real environment to trigger off to the, that innovation will be born. It doesn't fall from the sky. I was lucky. I did for my parents and also my university. But it happened. So innovation is not people in the classroom. You enter into the innovation space that triggers off. All the professors are those manning those space from their own. You cannot be a teacher unless you're an innovator. And you do your innovation and your research with your students. From a long time now, they follow you. I told them this morning, before universitas with the Dominicans, university started with us. We call it Universitas Magistrorum Escolarium. That's a group of masters with their followers. Each one was here, had a chair in biology, had a chair. They said it would be good if we bring them together to create that enabling space to bring out new people. That's exactly what. So this place should be extension space, innovation space, that will now trigger up young people. And then that works. And I'm ready to work with you because I know you have the ingredients. So I hope you've learned that. Thank you. Except. What threats? This is a normal thing in a management threats. It's a, it's a static mentality of entrepreneurship. We, the world is resilient. We look for what we call killer's assumption and remove them. When you live in a dynamic environment, there's no big threats. You can always adjust. The system we are developing is resilient. So the answer is creating a resilient system that can easily go back again. I remember my father told me, if you made all your plan, everything worked as you plan, you're not a demand. So you must create a resilient system that makes you to navigate. But people are told, for them, the principles and practices. People learn management practices, but not management principles. So when they fell into something they didn't know before, they give up. But the principle should make you to navigate, look for alternative B, one word. This is it. This is a new mentality. Hey, you know, you know what? Five hundred we open your eyes. So this is what I'm teaching my people. There's always options. In fact, I did an experiment. Give me that one. With the bees and flies. Imagine a bottle. A bottle of water. Give me that one. Yes. This is the water of water. I did an experiment in that one. I put bees and flies there and open here and put light here. It was in the dark. I put light here. So the bees that are mathematical, that are logical, they were trying to, this light here, that's the way. But the flies that are not so good, they were searching for everywhere. Half of the flies left. All the bees died. Because for them, 
The only solution is this way that is right. I hope you get the message. So, to us, is every option. One door closes, there are three more doors waiting for you. you see, people were just trained to be that way. It doesn't work what you learn from, you know, hand out to live. That's what the professor told you, you do it. If it doesn't work, give up. Okay? I hope it's finished. Thank you. Let's put our hands together. For Father, thank you so much for the questions. Uh, before we go to the next item, there will be, as we're rounding up, there will be a mocktail by 7 p.m. today. Um, the Vice Chancellor has graciously um, permitted those who asked questions, the eight of them, to join us in today's mocktail. 7, 7 p.m., numbers 1 to 8. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. It's been an honor to have you in Bowen for this um, last couple of hours. I'll now invite the university librarian to come for the presentation of gift items to our guest lecturer. On behalf of Bowen University, the vice chancellor, other principal officers, and on behalf of the colleges, the management as whole, and the students of Bowen University, we appreciate you, sir, for coming to Bowen despite your busy schedule. And we were more enlightened by your presentation. I think you almost made all of us an agriculturalist or whatever. So it's an eye-opening presentation, and we are glad to have you, sir. So on behalf of what we, we want to present this token of our love to you, sir, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and the University at the Thank you, sir. So we are presenting you with this gift too, sir, so that you remember you've been to Bowen. Okay, sir. So we will wrap so that we can see what is there. On behalf of the management, we want to give this token to the assistants to our presenters today. So we appreciate your coming too. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. If you're excited about today, put your hands together. If you are making noise, you can make the noise better. All right, please put your hands together as we invite your vice chancellor for the closing remarks and appreciation. Don't stop clapping and shouting, continue. The louder you clap, the better your CGPA. So, so got it. You got it. Don't read, though. Just be shouting. Don't read. All right. Thank you. Thank you for one night. Thank you. Thank you. Listen to me. Listen to me. We are not going to hear this and go to sleep on it. 
So, um, the director of um, education services notes during our one week entrepreneurship and so on, before then, um, this student will listen to this. All right, we do a critique. We either those who want to critique and critique, those who want to develop a plan, an idea out of this they've had could go ahead so that this will be one of the weeks what they are going to pitch all right please note that we need to do that to keep it burning all right that's the first thing we'll do um on this so are you listening so she's she's going to be reaching out to you all right before the entrepreneurship week entrepreneurship and innovation week so that you you, if you want to critique this, go ahead, critique. Um, Father missed out something which I think um, if I had this to hit, it would make it better. Let's get it. All right? Uh, it's something that actually catalyzes something in the minds of men. That's one. Um, the Provost College of Agriculture, Engineering and Sciences. Please, tomorrow father will have gone is our own assistant professor associate professor professor we will meet at the library 10 30 a.m we're discussing this matter and we're forward please uh, these are these are things we must do and we must do um very quickly so let me inform you that um one of the things we're planning doing from next year is actually we want to build an innovation hub all right where any students have an idea can go in for as long feeding everything is taken inside the hall you can forget about the studies for a while and go think over it work over it if he wants to contact anybody in the world facilities will be put there where he or she can make contact with anybody fix an appointment do a zoom do a whatever and the university keep giving the support of those ideas until something will spring up and we're trusting that when that happened we're trusting that when that happened along around here we could support we could begin to give them opportunity to start up around here of course the university may have 10 percent of whatever it is after starting up it becomes successful okay um uh, we we believe that um is the africans who must find solution to African challenges. All right? It's the Africans who must find solution to African challenges. We don't need to wait for the whites or any other person. All right? He has just shown it. Um, on behalf of um, the entire university community, um, this is to say thank you to you, sir, for it's a Macedonian call. And thank you for responding to that call. We're, we're we want to say that uh, the sacrifice you have taken to be here um, will not be in vain by the grace of God. Uh, am I speaking your mind? Will it be in vain? All right. If it will not be in vain, keep disturbing us on the road. I have an idea. I have not. I want to see Father. Uh, I have an idea. The person who said that is looking at me now. I have an idea. I have this. People will, will listen to you and give you opportunity. Um, to pitch all right so um by the powers conferred on me this is a good time to close the um 17th commencement lecture in the name of god the father in the name of god the son and in the name of god the holy spirit thank you god bless you all Please be seated. We are not done yet. You should learn to follow instructions. Remain seated until you are told to stand up. Two very important announcements. If you are with the attendance sheet, kindly pass them to the extreme end so that they can be collected. And those of you whose phones were taken as offering, you can go to the Directorate of Student Support Services, the basement of the new Senate building, and work out a way to collect your phones. Um, we will now invite Reverend Professor Oladili to close us with a word of prayer.
let's 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 rise please let's rise to pray our heavenly father we thank you for enlightening the eyes of our understanding we pray that this enlightenment would mix with faith in us and spurs into action in the right direction in the name of our lord jesus christ we thank you for your son a vessel unto honor who has come to bless us since you promised to bless whoever blesses us as children of abraham by faith we pray that your presence go with him and your peace be upon him and his enterprise in the name of our lord jesus christ you brought him here safely father land him safely at home in the name of our lord jesus christ bless him with renewed strength and renewed grace in the name of our lord jesus christ and as for the university lord jesus we've heard lord jesus help us oh lord jesus to utilize what we've heard to greater productivity and leaping into greatness in the name of our lord jesus christ for our students continually bless them and enrich them in every way possible in jesus name thank you blessed redeemer for we prayed with thanksgiving in jesus name amen we'll now take the anthems in reverse order bowen anthem national anthem and then the procession, um, the people here will recess in reverse order. When they are recessing, please stand and remain standing. Bowen Anthem. national anthem. Our guests will now recess in reverse order with the assistant registrar in the Directorate of Admissions, Examination and Ceremonies leading in reverse order. Technical.
Pay attention. Pay attention.